and then off we go. So welcome to the Platform SIG meeting the 13th of August. Uh, we've got a, a topic on the agenda related to um, adopt open action items. We'll review briefly, adopt open JDK for Docker on Alpine, or for, let's talk Docker on Alpine only. Uh, Alpine, Docker, adopt open JDK eight for Docker on Alpine. And then we'll create a separate item for adopt open JDK eight for Docker on other platforms. Okay, so there we go. So there's been a, a so we'll discuss that separately. And deprecate the Docker agent stretch images. GitHub app authentication on ci.jenkins.io. Oh, let's see, am I sharing my screen? It would help if I shared my screen instead of just talking to it. Sorry about that. There we go. Okay. And the plugin installation manager in Docker images. And I. That was probably Tim. Yeah, and I think that one is just a status report. So that can be me or you, Alex. All right, because it's it's available, it's intended to be available, preview mode, uh, and we'll we'll talk to it. Anything else that needs to be on the agenda, Alex? Um, I don't think so. Okay, great. All right, so open action items, awkward and an embarrassing one. A JEP for Docker operating system support has been made intensely more needed by recent disclosures, recent public disclosures. Uh, then we've got the Docker build rework PR that's going to be delayed. And then an Alpine image update PR, that one I'd been ev evaluating, but I think we need to shift our focus for today onto Adopt Open JDK 8 for Docker on Alpine. So this one, the story is that a, uh, there's been a public disclosure of uh, security vulnerability. So work is being done now to address that. And there's really no fix based on Open JDK because Open JDK has dropped uh, Alpine support. So we must use uh, adopt open JDK 8 if we want, um, want to fix. And that's what Oleg has submitted as a proposal. Alex, any concern there from you in terms of accepting a breaking change in order to make that transition? And so the, there are pull requests pending to update uh, Docker, the Docker image, the agent images, uh, and it's multiple agent images, if I recall correctly as well. Yeah, we need to, uh, to ship all the repositories. So in this case, Docker SSH built agents is uh, the biggest priority. Taken the nature of uh, disclosed issues, but the other uh, images also uh, require update. And, so, uh, and yeah. oh, go ahead. Yeah, inbound, uh, also base agent, also all general key agents thing, because uh, they also include uh, dependencies ah, okay. uh, on uh, Alpine versions. Yeah. So I will focus on uh, Jenkins uh, controller release and on uh, agents first. And uh, I would appreciate some uh, reviews for SSH agents. I pasted the link to the chat, Alex, because uh, the pull request builder fails on Windows due to strange issue. And yeah, uh, since it's on Windows, I make a bold assumption that we don't uh, want to get blocked by that. But at the same time, I would appreciate review if, uh, we, uh, if there is a fix we could apply. Yeah, I think the issue is that um, 
this one was never updated to pin the pester at a specific version. Yeah. So I, I can I can put in a PR for this. It should be pretty easy. Mm -hmm. So yeah, if you'll have some bandwidth for that, it would be great. Uh, meanwhile, uh, I handle uh, the controller and the um, common image of images. Sure. Thank you. Okay. okay. All right. So then we, we would benefit some additional testing, but the Oleg, I think you said that the automation other than on the SSH agents, or it was only the SSH agents that had a Windows agent test failure, is that in general on all of them? No, it was on the one image. The point about the engines, uh, we still need uh, to get the upstream image at least first before we get full CI running. That's why I focus on it first. Okay. Uh, because, yeah, we need uh, um, additional uh, time. And yeah, release draft isn't working as well, likely because of some issues. So yeah, I will uh, switch it to GitHub actions. Okay. All right. Anything, any other items on adopt open JDK 8 for Docker on Alpine? So we had discussed in previous meetings, potentially doing adopt open JDK on Buster and on CentOS, on CentOS. Um, again, I think the, in this case, I believe we're not yet distributing those. So Buster because stretch uh, will be unsupported January of 2021. And I guess this leads us to a question of should what should our Debian plan be in general, given that the Debian project has announced the intent to release Debian Bullseye uh, in January of 2021, and they only support, they only provide security fixes for current, for stable and uh, previous stable not for anything older and so beginning january 21 or sometime shortly thereafter uh, they will stop security fixing stretch i thought they'd already done that so that's that's good news at least but uh, if we're so if we're not pinning uh, to a specific version of Adopt Open JDK, for instance, um, when they upgrade, we would get the upgrade to whatever the new version is. So we oh, need to oh. decide if we want to pin or not. Well, and, and I think that, that the pattern Oleg's shown us is he's pinning strongly to a specific version of Adopt Open JDK's uh, Docker image, and I prefer that as well. So. Does that does that mean that this discussion, the discussion of Buster or CentOS, is actually no? I guess it's not irrelevant because they adopt Open JDK provides a Buster image. Is that is that correct, Alex? I don't remember there. I, I don't remember if they provide a separate Buster tag. Yeah, let me do a quick check. Excuse my having to do the check while we're live here, but. Adopt Open JDK, and what we're looking for is the top one is the um, the top one in that list is the quote unquote official. Oh, oh, and we need unofficial. So, well, we we have to use some of the unofficial images. I believe Buster is part of their official. Their oh, oh, it is. Okay, all right. So if we look at I, I, let's, I think it is. Let's look first then at Adopt Open JDK. And these are the Docker official images. And if we look here, okay, I don't see. And the, the filter tags. Filter tags. Oh, right. Buster. Buster. There we go. Thank you. Okay, so don't see it there. How about Alpine? 
And we knew that Alpine, Alpine was not yet not. official. We know it's right. It may not ever be. So the Docker official images are the ones that are built by the um, Docker people themselves. Right. The adopt open JK um, repository or whatever you want to call it are the ones built by adopt open JDK. So that one right there is built by adopt open JDK. So it's not like it's some third random party or random third party person. Right. Still, uh, they do not have full test coverage being compared to official images. So at the platform seat meeting several months ago when we were discussing that. Uh, well, it was brought up as a main concern block in uh, JF Alpine images. And as Alex said, uh, there is no guarantee that they will ever be in GA. I mean, there, there's no other source for these images unless we build them ourselves and test them ourselves, which I don't think we want to do. Yes, yeah, so I'm not so, up for that. Yeah, so Oleg, I'm trying to, trying to understand that one because I thought this was the image that we, this is the image that we need to use in order to do Alpine in order to, yep. so so therefore I think we are accepting that we'll use this. Yeah, yeah there is even um, uh, to do in the pull request uh, you reviewed. Uh, this pull request uh, to do explicitly references it as experimental ones. Right. And well, we couldn't uh, do anything better. And uh, let's be honest, I'm not sure what is better, partial experimental test coverage, but by adopt open GDK, a conglomerate of multiple companies and contributors working uh, on the baseline, or in-house builds uh, by Docker, for which we have already experienced quite a number of problems. Yeah, my preference is the just yeah, my preference is to prefer what what adopt open JDK, even though they call it unofficial. I think it better meets our need. Yeah. Well, anyway, the release is uh, going out, so right. as we agreed, uh, I'm shipping them. Uh, but yeah, personally, I don't expect degradation in test coverage. And if you're concerned about test coverage, we should rather focus on our own test coverage because we still have on the smoke tests uh, for the images. Right. Okay, so back to the Buster question. It was, we think that Buster is in this. Nope, don't see anything there. So stretch. Okay, so- uh, they, I, they don't have a stretch image for sure. Okay, all right. So they don't specifically tag the um, Debian. Oh, maybe it's Debian, but it's- Oh, oh, should have thought of that, it's, right. It's probably not specific yet. So they don't call out that it's Buster. But but that that then indicates that we would be, if we choose to use Adopt Open JDK as our base image, we would take whatever Debian they're running, whatever Debian is in their image, because we would be based on their image I mean, the other thing we could do is propose um, or add additional tags to the upstream. I've done that for Windows um, to request a, a specific tag for um, Buster. They don't do yeah. a stretch image at all. And yeah, and, and I, I don't think there's any compelling reason for us to ask them for additional upstream tags. Let's just take what they've taken so so what we're really doing is is this is it's saying that it's on buster and that that's likely accurate because you said they don't do stretch but based on the adopt image adopt open jdk image and it's bundled debian version right i mean it's yeah. it's bundling some Debian version and it's whatever that is. So in our example here, it might be, let's see, let's take one. Uh, yeah, 
So for instance, if we took JRE 8U2665 B01 Debian as an example, and this would be the thing that would be Debian basis. Like that. Nothing there. So really the reference to Debian is just not relevant. And now on to the question of CentOS, we are delivering a CentOS image for CentOS 7. Uh, similar similar pattern, I assume that they tell us they they choose a CentOS version and that's just implicit in the, yeah, here we go. So 265B and it's whatever CentOS version they're bundling at that time. No, we're, we're actually not pulling from there right now from their image for CentOS. Ah, okay. We're All right. We're from CentOS, not from Adopt OpenJDK, CentOS. Ah, got it. Okay, so what you're saying is the current build process uses a CentOS base image and then installs Adopt OpenJDK. Well, it installs As a JDK. It just does a yum install Java, Java develop. Uh, okay, so it's installing, it in, installs, all right, so installs JDK with yum with the package manager yeah. from the OS. And the same is true for our Debian images, right? The current build process uses a Debian base image. No, I don't think so. Oh, okay, all right. So for our current Debian, it's from OpenJDK, a-jdk-stretch. Okay, so that's that's a, diff, a distinction between the two build processes there. So the current Debian build process, the current CentOS build process uses CentOS image, whereas the current Debian build process uses Deb uses the OpenJDK base image and doesn't therefore need to install a separate a separate JDK using the package manager. Okay. But the proposal there in terms of the transition to adopt OpenJDK, is it to consider using adopt OpenJDK as the base image for the Debian build process as well? I think we need to find that because um, the one negative of using the package manager is you don't know explicitly what Java version you're getting. Um, so I, I guess it depends on whether we want to use a specific version of Java on in our images or if we want to rely on the package manager version. So we could do the same thing for Debian, right? We could use a from Debian and then use that to install OpenJDK packages. I don't know if that's better or worse. Yeah, so what it what it's it, it at least highlights right now we are we've got a, a, a disparity between CentOS 
build process that's based on core operating on the operating system image, and the Debian process is based on the um, Open JDK image. The Alpine process prior to um, Oleg's changes was based on the Alpine image. And so the new Alpine image will be based on, on adopt open JDK Alpine image, right? Yeah, it's currently he and he put it on a specific version of the JDK. Right. Eight U and it was two six two if I remember right. And there, the question for me, I think that the, the majority of our installations are using the Debian, our Debian-based image. I'm hesitant there to say, hey, we'll accept breaking changes there, the number of potential people affected. But uh, if I remember correctly, the even, even on our Debian image, we're not running a brand new, it's not running a latest version of uh, JDK because the Debian base doesn't offer us a, or the open JDK base doesn't offer us a newer version. Alex, I think, let's see if I look at that. Uh, the Debian, oh, the current Debian. Uh, yeah, that was what I was just looking to see. I thought that the it current was, Debian uses OpenJDK 8 JDK stretch. Okay, all right. So it's it's using, there we go. Yeah, okay. And if, So you don't know what Java version that is or anything right now. Right, but I think that's one we should be able to find from Docker Hub, right? Just by searching for that. Oh, okay, I need a open JDK slash. No, it's one of the, it's, it's one of the um, it's not a organization. Oh, it is oh, not. No, it's part of the official. Docker. Ah, so we go to the official Docker image. Open, open JDK. Yeah, so there. it's part of what they call verified content. And then here, if we filter for, how did I, oh, it's yeah, just the, the, search for the tag, right? There we go. Yeah, so this one, this one is six months out of date, therefore it can't be current because Certainly, we we they we delivered or the JDK projects have delivered up two updates in the last six months. Yeah, let me do a quick check here. I think I've got a running installation here that I can do a quick check on system information that will tell us. System information right there. Okay, and this, if I remember correctly, is running the current image. Yeah, it's 242, so it's not that far out of date. The current release is 262 or 265. So it's it's six months behind, basically. It, do they have a buster? Um, I, I, that's a good question. I don't know. Let's look. So the question was, does the official image have anything for Buster? It, it had, uh, so we need eight. JDK. Yes, they do. And it, it's much more recent.
So we could So we could switch the current Debian build to Buster uh, to extend the life, the support life of that of that base image, right? That would um, that would at least give us a, a way to pin to Buster as well. Since adopt open JDK does not provide a Buster specific tag, right? Okay. Just as an idea, I, I don't know if we want to have different base images depending on the OS. I guess we already do. So. Yeah, we've so. And it seems like that might be less disruptive to users. To switch switch the base image from OpenJDK stretch to OpenJDK Buster, than to switch to constructing it ourselves, or to switch to adopt as the base image. Now, I thought one of the reasons that we had considered <clears throat> shifting to adopt OpenJDK for the base image was worry that the Debian project's maintenance of a Open JDK might be less diligent than the adopt Open JDK's maintenance of of the JDK. I thought there had been an episode, one episode some years ago, where the Debian project wasn't able to keep up with all of the all of the Open JDK changes. You mean the event when uh, maybe uh, three dot six dot one uh, broke? Because uh, the issues in uh, Debian, right? Yeah, I think that was it, right? I think it was it was Maven related, but but there haven't been issues since then, so I'm not sure that that's a compelling thing. But there was an episode. There was that one episode. Yeah. Okay, so we get really to chat about this work. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. Thanks, Alex. <laughs> you remind very well. What we really need is a is a technical discussion, and we have a forum to do technical discussions called the jo the Jenkins Enhancement Proposal Process. Yeah. So <laughs> yes, wholehearted agreement and. And that's one of these, this is a, a, an education point for me that our choice of which base image, okay, got it. So yes, that needs to be there. I'm not trying to turn it into the best work. No, no, it, it, we've got, truly, we've got, to, we've got to make the decision and the decision needs discussion and the Jeff is the place to do that. All right, are there other things we need to discuss here other than that a Jeff's got to be created and we've got to discuss that. I don't think we have any any issues that are burning things down on these images currently. We know that January 2021 21 is a uh, or let's say it differently Debian bullseye release. is a uh, major event because it will drop security support for our Debian base operating system image. Do they have um, Docker images for both of you? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I think they do. Uh, I'll but look at that. Certainly the, the, the open JDK images do not have a bullseye image as far as I know. Let me just prove that, but I would be surprised if they did, because bullseye is is not released. Oops, bullseye. Yeah, so the the official images from from Docker do not have uh, 
images based on Debian, what will be Debian 11. Okay, so the crucial action there is action. We need a need a, a plan. Need a, a plan and completed work to switch before end of support. End of security fixes. The other um, thing we need to think about is a rebuild plan for images because we use um, like app to install packages and things like that, um, do we need to have a schedule for building images so that we can pick up um, updates to those packages for security issues as well? So do we rebuild the images every month? Do we rebuild them every quarter? That sort of thing. Which image is, uh, do you mean Jenkins controller or agents? Yes. I thought it was because both. Yeah, I guess the way to go is just uh, set up dependabot. Well, uh, there might be tricky parts, for example, how do we update remoting and other things. Uh, but for base images, dependabot will do the job. So uh, dependabot will change the base image that we're running. I thought Alex was also concerned about, um, uh, so that updates to the versions of items that are that are specific, specified by version in yeah, the my, my concern is let's say that they uh, you know there's a, a package that we're installing via app that has a security issue right that's that's not going to be caught by the of maybe we should rather add security scans and uh, to our pipeline then mm -hmm. Okay, well, and that's a that's also a very viable thing to consider. So security scanning. Oops. Does it, I mean, wouldn't that require us to build them on a, on a schedule at least? Or is there are there apps that check things? I, I, I'm not aware. So yeah, dependent what uh, would be checking dependencies automatically. Then uh, when it discovers dependencies, it would be creating pull requests. Uh, this pull request will be built by Jenkins CI, um, and if there are related security updates, etc., you would be getting uh, information um, in the security tab on GitHub. Uh, basically, any maintainer would have access to this information. So, so the default behavior is that update is public, but uh, the security details are private. So if you want, you can, uh, can uh, disable uh, security pull requests at all and just uh, get security controls. Yeah, and, and that, would, that would, for instance, offer us, that would automate, as an example, that would automate the update from JDK 8U262 to JDK 8U272, conceptually, if that were the number they chose. But, Oleg, back to the, the question that Alex observed earlier, if the SSH package inside that Debian image had a flaw, that Dependabot won't detect that, right? That we would need something like security scanning or some other technique to detect Depends that. on uh, how security scanning is currently working uh, for Docker, because Dependabot has tool it evolves. So I'm not sure what would you get now, and I'm not sure what would you get tomorrow. And nevertheless, uh, yeah, if we really want to have uh, deep uh, security scanning, then we should just add a tool like Ensure or whatever in our pipeline. I mean, we do scanning, we're just not uh, on a continuous basis.
Okay, and and that's that's the kind of thing that Anchor or another tools like at SNCC or will do a deep scan looking for issues inside the image. Okay. I'm not sure how deep it is this scan, but the the better the current situation. Okay. All right. Any, any other topics we need to note with regard to image rebuild plan? Uh, it's yes, if, so oh, like for instance, the, the technique you're using with the Alpine update is well suited to be used with Dependaba, right? Because it explicitly names, the, it enumerates the version number wow. inside it and Dependaba will offer a new version number update. It's not really a question of dependabot because dependabot, let's say, it's additional feature. It's rather a matter of uh, reproducible builds. So, well, uh, I'm still using Katayak, uh, but uh, at least it provides some uncertainty of what you pull inside the image. Because otherwise, you may easily end up with a situation that uh, you cut an LTS release, and then uh, there is a Java release or whatever release uh, happening uh, in parallel, so that uh, you ship uh, one of the images with one version of Java, another version of with another Java, or you might be shipping a version which wasn't tested by your continuous integration environment, and you discover it on the one you uh, cut a release because a release picked up the, picked up another version from the same uh, tag. Uh, so, in the current state, uh, our official packaging is exposed to all these issues. Pinning a version uh, is what I would highly recommend uh, for any use case of Docker. And uh, yes, I do have strong opinions about that, and Dependabot is not the main reason. I see. Okay. All right. So, it's, it's more about build repeatability, uh, your preference towards explicitly enumerating the version numbers inside the component, inside the, the from line of the Docker image. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Any other items we need to discuss there? Okay. All right, uh, Alex, anything, we're, we're nearing the end of our time. Anything you wanted to report on proposed deprecation of the stretch images? Is this the same thing due to yeah. stretch That's retirement it. or stretch end of life? We actually already have um, Buster images for the agents, um, whereas we, it looks like we don't for um, the controller. So it would just be, in this case, not publishing them anymore. Is there, a, is there anything we can or should do to alert, alert people that this thing is reaching end of life? I'm not sure how we would communicate to consumers of the images. So, you mean consumers of stretch? Of the, the Docker agent stretch images, right? I mean, they, they've captured an, a, an image. There's, there's not really a way for us to tell them, hey, we're not going to deliver new versions of this. Uh, there is a way uh, for us to do that. Uh, we have entry point, which includes a script, and we can easily add a warning to the script. So that every time you launch uh, this entry point, you get a warning in a console that this image is deprecated. Yeah, it won't cover 100% of use cases, but it will definitely cover the most common use cases for that. Good, okay. Uh, yeah, if you want uh, to go further, you can do the same, for example, uh, on the remoting side, so that it also appears in the build logs. But for build logs, you will really need to tweak remoting 
uh, well, unless Docker plugin or Kubernetes plugin um, recognize these messages. Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. What you're saying is if we taught remoting to detect that warning and raise it to the user, I'm not sure I, could you describe well, further what you mean it, there? It's even easier, for example, you at uh, Java system property uh, and in remoting, you can just read uh, the system property and display it uh, in the system log. So you don't need to invent uh, any new mechanism. Okay, so so that was that would would need a add a property to the agent image, and we would need to extend remoting to show that. Or yeah, so if you well, if you want to provide good user experience, then uh, yes, you would need uh, to change remoting. I see. Okay. Uh, well, uh, there might be other approaches, but yeah, it's not exactly a huge patch. Got it. Okay. And this patch can be actually useful for many other use cases. So I would be definitely willing to support it. All right. Okay, so anything else on deprecating the Docker agent stretch images? Okay, next topic we had listed was GitHub app authentication on ci.jenkins.io. Oleg, I think there the report is it's in use, it's uh, being used and working. Yeah. So, yeah, definitely we could do a longer demo, but well, I don't think it makes much sense because uh, next week we will have a presentation by Keja, including CI Jenkins IO. Uh, so just uh, join online meetup if you're interested to see the details, how it works on uh, build plugins. Uh, but yeah, CI Jenkins IO was switched, so now we've got a higher API rate limit, and also pipeline libraries, etc. Now use GitHub Checks API uh, for reporting, as well as multi-branch pipeline. So there are some issues we discovered, um, for example, duplicated reporting for Java doc and other things. So we likely need an update of GitHub Checks API plugins, but overall um, it seems to be working. Excellent, okay. Uh, last item, using plugin installation manager and Docker images. So this is in preview preview from uh, Tim Jacob's pull request. Uh, have has the image been released with that preview in it? No, uh, we agreed uh, to delay it until uh, there is a security release. And think in the current situation, I, uh, well, I'm not sure whether we agreed or not, but I think we need to delay it a, a bit more. So we firstly uh, should adopt upon GDK changes, and after that uh, we. Uh, ship the preview, uh, though I would be interested to have it in the next week. Yeah. And well, I believe that we will have it in the next week. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, so yeah, when when you say weekly, oh, oh, right, weekly. The Docker image based on the weekly. Is that what you mean? So yeah. So, uh, which is two dot two fifty three will be the next weekly. Okay, great. Anything else we need to put on the list for today? Oleg, do you want to give us a current status on the Alpine release process you've been running? Uh, okay, so, well, quick update. Uh, we have a release of uh, Docker agent base image. Uh, so I will paste the link uh, to the chat. Uh, but. Yeah, right now um, Docker Hub should be building this stuff as well as uh, trusted CI. Uh, same for Jenkins controller base image. Uh, 
also it's building although yeah we still yet to see what it will be result for that um, but yeah uh, the image is running so at least latest versions should be updated um, I'm not sure about tags, but uh, this is something we want to verify in our pipeline. Uh, then uh, for SSH built agents, uh, I'm still waiting uh, for pull requests to complete because yeah, Alex updated faster. Before that, uh, it was failing on Windows. So we need to pick up a fix, then respond the release, or maybe do a blind release with failing CI, but yeah. Uh, right now it's still running. And uh, yeah, for inbound agent and uh, for GNLP agents repositories, uh, we still need to do the stuff. So optimistically, by the end of the day, everything will be released. Uh, but yeah, it's not something like I will finish it in one hour. Excellent. That's, thank you very much. Thank you for your heroism on it. Thanks, thanks. Mm -hmm. All right. I think that ends our topics. I'm gonna go ahead and close the session. Anything else before we end? Oh, thanks, Mark. Thanks, everybody. That's all. That's all. Jeez.